Hello, hello everybody, this is Tipshop MTG here today with another MTG Arena video. In today's video, I want to talk about 2021 and the future of Magic the Gathering Arena. So, in the past, I have done a lot of talking about the future of things, whether it be things like Jumpstart or anything really that Wizards has done a couple times, and I want to examine the future of it. And a little bit earlier this year, I did a prediction or kind of a wish list video for 2020, and I said, here are the things that I want later this year. And, you know, we've made it to the end of 2020, we have seen all of the state of the games and actually all of the updates for the year, and so now I'm going to be talking about the things that I want to see. I'm also going to talk about what predictions I, or maybe not predictions, but what wish list items I wished for before that came true, and which ones didn't, because why would I spend a ton of time talking about something that I, you can go watch in a completely separate video? So I have about 11 new things that I would love to see, and a bunch of them that I talked about before that did not happen, so why don't we jump right into this? So I went and looked back at my list, uh, and I kind of looked at the items that were done. And actually, out of my 17 or 15 suggestions, only six of them happened, and so, and some of them didn't happen fully. So here are the things that kind of happened that I wished for. So one of them was better in-game card tracking, and while this isn't a huge thing, the first tag was added to cards when you collect them for the first time, which I would clarify, uh, like, consider better in-game card tracking, but I do wish it was a little bit more comprehensive, for instance, being able to see how many of each card you have in a draft, stuff like that, um, that would be really nice to see. So that one, they did it, but it was kind of vague in the beginning, so I kind of hope they expand on it. We have Historic Ranked All the Time. This is a wonderful thing that they did, and I'm glad they did it. Um, and that one, I classified it as Ranked Changes. Again, kind of having to, like, you know, stretch what I was saying a little bit. I said non-standard products, and then we got Jumpstart, which was really nice, uh, and we're go going back and getting the remastered set, so I would say that's definitely one that they have done well with. I wanted Phantom, Draft, and Sealed, and so we kinda got this uh, in the form of Cube. It was the first Phantom offering that MTG Arena has gotten. Uh, however, I hope this expands in the future to be able to, say, draft future sets, because I know a lot of people who don't care about Standard or Constructed, and if they could draft more but not keep the cards, they definitely would, so I think that would be a really awesome thing for them to expand on, um, but they did kind of do it. We saw our first Phantom event. Uh, another one was Permanent Brawl, which we did see the release of, and that one just fully happened, and then one of my things was just better stability, and while I would say that, you know, we've had some rough times, the past couple updates have been pretty good, so you know, I guess that kind of works too. But here were the 11 things that I kind of asked for before that aren't here and I still want. So better single player content. I would love, for instance, a better Sparky where I could give it any deck and it would somewhat know how to pilot it. Yes, it may not be able to figure out that this is an infinite combo deck, but if I give it a meta mono red deck, it should be able to pilot that and help me test out my deck against certain archetypes. Um, and obviously, I don't think you should need the card. You should be able to build the deck out of with cards you don't even have and give it to Sparky to play against. And I think that would be really awesome and would let people kind of fine-tune their deck against not real people. So I, I really wish we had a better Sparky. And then the other thing is a story mode, and I mentioned this last time, maybe not story, but maybe like a single-player campaign where you go and you defeat lots of th enemies. Uh, it could be cool if it's similar to like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's World of Light, maybe. Uh, kind of similar to the color challenge, actually, where you start off with a deck, and as you go, you unlock more cards or m more groups of cards, and then you're slowly building up this this deck, or maybe there was like a kind of gauntlet mode where you, um, very similar to like a sealed environment where you like open up some packs, fight against some AIs that, you know, scale, and then every time you defeat one, you get some extra cards, and you don't keep any of the cards, but it's just this little fun game mode you do, or maybe you do keep the cards, I don't know. I just think it'd be really cool to give some better single player content, and I get Magic is a multiplayer game, but I think there are some really interesting avenues that could be explored for a single player experience. 
I would also love a new way to obtain cards for Historic. We did, I guess, kind of see this with Jumpstart being a non-booster pack thing, but that's not really what I want. I don't want to limit the options. I want more options. Um, for instance, I would love a Historic booster, and I know this sounds very vague, but, you know, there are so many sets in Historic. A lot of time it's like, eh, I could get it from this one set, but it'd be nice if there was maybe a Historic booster that had everything or were, you know, the more relevant cards in Historic, which I don't think is a super huge deal, but I also kind of wish they were a little bit more lenient when giving out cards. I'd love to see more historic ICRs, but like the, the idea is like a historic card, for instance, can only be played in historic, but a standard card can be played in both. So the fact that they value historic and standard cards equally, I feel like at this point that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'd love to see them kind of increase the amount of cards we can earn in other ways. For instance, if there was a festival and it had a historic thing, I would love if it just gave you a random historic rare on every slot. I would feel much better about entering the festivals if instead of getting five styles, I got five styles and five rares. And I think a lot of other players would too, so I'd love to see that. I'd also like to see better in-game card and win tracking. Right now you have to use third-party tools for things like win tracking, and again, the improved card tracking we got this year was just first. Um, so I'd love to see new stuff to go with that. Um, I'd love to be able to see a log during and after matches of every step that's happened, because there are times where my phone rings, I look down and I look up and the board is completely different, and I kind of have to guess what happened. I'd love to see an in-game calendar rather than their website that seems to never get updated. I'd love achievements and long-term quest. Very similar to the daily quest, but maybe they either reset with the release of a new standard set or whatever, or maybe they just don't. There's just a list of really long challenges, and you can get either little rewards or not even rewards um, for completing them, and they're like long-term things. Like, you could not complete in a day if you played for 24 hours straight, and it would give players like a long-term goal to go towards and maybe could encourage less people to net deck if you have challenges that maybe reward them with packs or cards or styles or like a, a card sleeve if they are extremely hard to do. I think that more Phantom and Draft Sealed, uh, Phantom Draft and Sealed events would be great. Obviously, the mobile app, um, which we know is coming out around the corner. I'd love to see four player modes, which I think a lot of people would. And I would say it's probably the number one most missing feature from MTG Arena, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'd love to see older formats and a more stable client, but I think all of those last things are pretty obvious. I believe those came from the these are obvious. I think everyone wants this list of my last video, but why don't we jump into my new stuff? So that was all stuff that I still think the game could use and ways it could improve, but what about the things that I didn't think about last time or that have kind of come up since then? So these first two are, I'm going to kind of point you in other videos, but then after that, uh, I'm going to talk about them fully here. I would love to see more Jumpstart. Either the existing format or altered ones with new packs or removed packs or changed packs. I mean, I did a whole video about how Jumpstart 2 could happen, and I spent a lot of that video talking about how Jumpstart could become an MTG Arena only product, or how at least MTG Arena could enhance Jumpstart and then maybe even boost the paper product in the future. So you guys should go check out that video. It is pretty awesome. If I remember, there'll be a link in the comment or in the description. If there's not, let me know and I can put one there. Similarly, I think an improved direct challenge would be really awesome. Again, I checked, uh, check out my video covering this. I talk about things like uh, being able to draft and do sealed with friends, being able to like add emblems to the game or set up custom game rules would also also be really awesome. One thing now that we're going to talk about more specifically here is the return of the workshop events. So these were events that would run, I believe, every Monday through Tuesday, and what they were were they were just wacky things. Sometimes they were just, hey, play these pre-built decks. Sometimes they're like, hey, here's this deck with 24, you know, of this card that normally you can't have 24 of in a deck. Um, sometimes it was like, here are draft decks, and it was just a really refreshing free event that rewarded very minimal rewards, but it was a nice little break and kind of kept things interesting from time to time. With the FNM at home, they claimed they didn't need both, but I actually really miss them and hope they return. Another thing is spectator mode, and I think this is really necessary for things like running tournaments. Um, I think it's necessary 
um, for both direct challenges, which I think is where it'll be implemented, but I would also really love to be able to spectate friends in other matches. It's not like it's a, I don't know, a shooter game where being able to spectate everything would lead to an unfair advantage. Yes, you could maybe help your friend by telling them better plays to make, but you can already do that by like screen sharing with Discord. So it would just be a nice little thing to do. On top of that, like in the friends menu, it'd be cool if you could see each player's health and like stats about the game so that if I'm waiting for a friend, I should know, oh, they're both at 20 life or, oh, he's at one life. I should just wait. Then I would also like to see a permanent historic brawl queue. This takes the place of a permanent brawl queue. Um, I think it would be really awesome. It's a very fun and now different format because of all the new legends. And I think if they're going to keep pushing historic sets, having a historic brawl queue is really important. I'd also love to see more consistency when it comes to flashback drafts, which are essentially drafts of premier drafts, like player drafts of older sets. It seems like we get them here in you know, every so often, but it seems very sporadic, and it almost seems like, a, oh no, we need events, let's just throw one of these in. It'd be really awesome if, for premier drafts, there was always a flashback draft, and it was predictably rotating through sets, because while Corset 2019 may not have had the best, you know, draft environment, I'm sure there are some people who would love to play it, and just because it's not super popular, I don't think they should be denied that option. So, maybe a weekly rotating uh, thing that can cycle through, you know, Kaladesh Remastered, Amonkhet Remastered, Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Corset 2019, and can kind of just go through those repeating in a cycle. I think that would be pretty awesome. Then I think that longer sealed times or a return to sealed with older sets would also be really nice. Currently, the only time you can play sealed on MTG Arena is shortly after the release, I believe for about a week or two, and then you can never play sealed again for that set. And as someone who doesn't, doesn't dabble with sealed all that often, I would love to get into it more, but the fact that I have to do it immediately after a set comes out doesn't feel the best, and I wish I could do it kind of at any time. So I wish there was always a, a sealed event going on, or at least more consistency, or whatever the latest standard set always had their sealed on. Either way, I'd also love to see a return to older sets with sealed that maybe I didn't get a chance to play. play. And I know draft is the preferred format for a lot of people, but I also know people who don't like drafting and would rather just build a limited deck without having to draft. So yeah, I definitely think that would be a pretty awesome thing to do. Here's another one which I was surprised wasn't on my list because I've been advocating it for a while. I think that there should be more codes and paper products. I mean, I don't see why when you get a booster pack, I'd love to see a code in a booster pack means a code for an MTG Arena pack. But even if they didn't, I would love if one in five packs had a code on the back of the token that let you redeem a pack in-game. I think that would be really awesome. On top of that, things like Jumpstart should have come with codes. Maybe do codes in the box. Like if you buy a booster box in real life, you get a booster box in-game. That way you're not doing, you know, thousands of, you know, tens of thousands of codes just for each pack. Instead, you are doing, you know, oh, a booster box of 24 gets you 24 in game. I think that would be really awesome. It also works well with other products, like if they return to Brawl decks, which I don't think they will, or maybe you buy a bundle, you also get a bundle and the promo in game. I think that more codes and paper products would not only support LGSs more, but it would bring more unity to the magic world and maybe not make them so separate. Another one is setting default basic lands. I contemplated putting it on the list because we know it's coming, but I figured if I talked about mobile, I can talk about this. It does seem a little bit ridiculous that it has been over a year since they've said it's coming, and it's we haven't heard from it since, heard about it since. Um, so yeah, I'd love to be able to set basic lands, and I feel like they probably have lost money over this because people are like, oh, I'd love to ba get the basic lands, but I don't want to go change out all my basics every time I build a deck and go back to my previous decks and change out all the basics. So yeah, I definitely think this is a needed feature and would actually benefit them in the long run. So I don't know why it's taken them so long. On top of that, I guess, is more deck slots. Right now, you're allowed to have 75 decks, and if you kept the pre-built decks and renamed them and put new cards in them, you can have, I think, up to like 90 at this point. But I really would love to see that cap increased. The fact that people have 90 decks shows that it is possible. And it would be nice if every time they added the pre-built decks, uh, they just increased your inventory slot by that amount. I mean, if... Like, if some people are going to have that many decks, why can't everybody? And as the game gets older, you know, maybe there is a point where you have 75 good decks that you don't want to delete. And so that would be really disappointing. So I do hope we see more of those. Now, you'll notice a lot of these things are very, very small. And this kind of leads me back to a point that I made in a video a little bit ago where I talked about MTG Arena 2. And I, I just, the concept of it was, oh, MTG Arena is so flawed, it's missing so many features. But I sat here 
maybe not exclusively doing this, but I thought about what does MTG Arena need as a feature? Because I'm like, I, I'm working on another video where I plan out MTG Arena in the future, like going down every month saying this is what's happening that month, right? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I want to make sure there's feature releases every so often, but what features are really needed? I mean, like, four-player modes are probably the biggest thing here. And that's about it. So I think once we get four player modes, I mean, the rest is just events. And so I kind of look back at my state of the games where I say, oh, it's just advertisements of events. And I'm like, well, maybe that makes sense. I mean, yes, they can improve direct challenges. Yes, there are little quality of life things that could update. I'm not saying there's nothing they could do, but if I'm looking for a substantial feature update, they're really running out of things. And maybe I'm forgetting something, but a lot of these things seem really small and I wanted to do more suggestions, but I'm having trouble coming up with ideas and honestly doing this has been kind of eye-opening i mean i bashed on the december game update but maybe it wasn't that crazy i just wish we were getting more quality of life things that don't seem like they would take that long but i want to know what you guys think in the comments down below are you happy with the amount of features we're getting in mtg arena do you wish it was more uh, what features am i not thinking of is there something pretty big um obviously right now they can release sets uh, and honestly, you know, they're trying to release sets as fast as they can, but if you release them too often, people aren't going to buy them. So it's this delicate balance of like, what do they do with the game? And I really want to know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Either way, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.